Hello, and welcome to an intro to Anthro with two humans. I'm human number one, John McRae. And I'm human number two, John Lear. And this is the podcast where we reassess what it means to be human. God, and yeah. <laughs> the title of this episode is It Don't Mean a Ting If You Ain't Got Dim Rings Accents and Dialects in Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Reality. So I, I'm I'm really excited about this one. Me too. This, I mean it's this fascinating. Is, this, it's right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> I think. We we may have to uh come back to this topic because just reading yeah. about it beforehand really um I don't know. It brings up so many questions, and mm-hmm. I don't. Know. I don't know if we'll be able to cover everything in this in this episode. Yeah. But. Well, you know, people spend their entire lives on dialects, exactly. right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. All right. So I'm not sure. I know you're into science fiction, oh, and I'm God, not, yes. <laughs> I even so like the new. I even like the new Dune. Really? Everybody's like, "Oh, it's so boring." I I, I I've watched it twice. Wow. I just like it. I just like it's 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 sort of like watching golf. It's just so <laughs> relaxing. I don't watch golf. But it, it you know, from what people have told me because I've always been curious about why people would watch golf on television. You just put it but, on uh, and then you can relax and get into the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like you're yeah, it's like you're yeah, it's it's relaxing exactly. Um, are you into, I guess Dune is kind of fantasy as well. Are you into fantasy? Eh, I, yes, I am. And I know that's a good, I, I, I snuck a quick peek at today's uh, uh, outline that you, you, you very well researched outline. <laughs> and I know that fantasy is a part of today's uh, show. Right. Um, right. So, but yes, I am. I'll, I'll watch any, anything. I, I always joke around. I'll, I'll pay 14 bucks just to turn on a lightsaber and put it on the table. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, I, I would watch that. Wow. All right. Uh, have you been watching, uh, the new Amazon prime video series, Lord of the Rings, the rings of power. Have you, I have not watched a ton of it. Um, but I have watched enough to be able to speak about it. Yes, I know about how all the problems it's causing with the, you know, people are very upset, very upset. Exactly. For different reasons. But first of all, it's supposed to be the most expensive television show ever made, is what That what I they don't say. see. Yeah. That I don't see. Do you? No, I don't see I th- the most expensive. I think if you were producing that, they could have come in a lot lower. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think they could have done a, a lot cheaper oh. out in like you know malibu creek canyon or something i guarantee <laughs> i could have brought that in on a lower budget guarantee improvise you don't even need a script it don't even worry about exactly. the, the text just we got there. it moving on we got it we got it trust me it's not so, gonna get any better <laughs> So as I don't know if you know or not, but the new series is supposed to be, you know, that there were the films. There were like the films of around 2000. Me too. Lord of the Rings. Amazing. Can I just say one thing, though, about the films? What's that? I I, they all kind of seem the same. (laughs) Like they all there was a battle. There would be a battle that you have to get the team together. There would be a battle that they'd lose and then another battle that they'd win. Right. Which is That's, kind of Tolkien kind of, that was his whole idea of, of his history was like, you would have history was linear with the cycles of evil growing mm-hmm. and then evil destroying itself and then starting over. So the movies, the movies were kind of that, <laughs> that same way, I guess. Okay, good. It, good. So I'm not the only one. Right. But, you know, the new series is, it's not, re- I mean, it's based on more like the appendices from right. the Lord of the Rings. Yes. And, and it's based on the Sil- Silmarillion. Have you, <laughs> did you read the Silmarillion? I never it's, did. What, what is it? it? It's, uh, well, Tolkien wanted to create a mythology for English people. Meaning it, it, that was kind of based in tongue, meaning language, 
and also in mm -hmm. place. And so, and he, you know, he was an Anglo-Saxon scholar and, but, but what he did was uh, he also wrote to support the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. He wrote the Silmarillion, which is like his myth, the myth that he created to support his world. And Jesus. at the time, at the time he wanted to, like in the early fifties, he wanted to publish the Silmarillion at the same time as Lord of the Rings. And even his publisher then was like, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> we're, not, we're not bringing those out at the same time, you know, because the Silmarillion <laughs> really gets into the, like, a granular detail about all these myths and stuff that he talks about. It's, it's so funny because the guy who writes uh, uh, the, you know, the Game of Thrones, totally different approach. Yeah. Like, he just yeah. writes... And then I, from what I understand is he just writes and he has some super fans of his that, will, <laughs> that he will check in with and say, hey, I need to get these yeah. guys over here. And they're like, oh, no, that would take seven days of travel. Yeah. You know, like so funny. He's, you know. Yeah, completely opposite. I mean, they're both popular. They're both these, yeah. these fantasy worlds that people love and get involved with. But um, so anyway, with this new one, it's all based on these stories that he told like uh, like i say in the appendices and in the Silmarillion. so they weren't really l written linearly like the the lord of the rings was itself or right. the hobbit for example so he didn't write that the dialogue everything that comes out in this new series this is all just being written by hired guns for mm -hmm. you know in mm -hmm. hollywood that came out and they read the similar or whatever and just put together the dialogue yeah here's so the thing... best we got they just vomited <laughs> that crap out yeah you yeah poor guys go in, go in and pitch in that thing you know what i mean yeah. it's... all right so in the similar <laughs> what no i don't know yeah. <laughs> just imagine the whiteboard in the writer's oh. room God, oh. and just oh well in Anglo Saxon oh they say this, but then oh. Say, oh, could geez. we get sharper sharpies? Because it's take <laughs> we need to, you know, in green. Yeah. Stop with yeah. the post-its. Yeah, post-its all world. over the place. All, all over. The whole you office. You can't get out oh. of the writer's room. It's already posted. <laughs> There's post-its uh, everywhere. And, you, and one there. of the post-its says dragon question mark. <laughs> So, so one of the complaints about the new one, which people are talking scholars and fans mm -hmm. are yes. upset because they say talk this new series is not canon. It's it's not talking. It's something else. Which okay, I mean that's I got news for you though that the films themselves there were a lot of stuff in the films that weren't weren't canon Absolutely. either. Absolutely, and you know those people. I mean, are they really? I get well. I guess they're they're a large enough fan base to make a difference so you have to yeah. please them but, but, you uh, know but those what? are like D, D guys you know we know yeah. who they are we know who those guys are and i would say you know this is a tv show or a movie and what, what a tv show <laughs> you need sex you know sex sells yeah. as we said in our life and yeah. you want hotties in there so what did they do in the, in the <laughs> movies yeah, they focus on Frodo and Sam Gamgee, but they also have like Viggo Mortensen and Liv Tyler. You know, yeah, they, they kind of right. show the humans a little more. You know what oh. I mean? Because well, Liv wasn't Liv a um, an elf or no? She was an I elf. Don't remember? Yeah, she was she an was elf. Hot, God, and and that's an why I mean Viggo Mortensen, and Liv Tyler. You got to mm. have them in there. They would be sexy, even like as Muppets or something. You know, you yeah, yeah. Have them with like. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then they did it again in The Hobbit, remember? Because it, suddenly it was yes. like, oh, we have Bilbo, but now what are we going to do? We need to add a little something. So they had yes. uh, Keely, the dwarf, mm -hmm. fall in love with, they created a character, Toriel, yes. who, who was another yes. hot elf, you know. And she was never in uh, the original books, right? Exactly. That and, never and happened. People complained about that. There, there was. Well, you know actually, what? It was a great move. It was yeah. a great move, in my opinion. Yeah, me that too. grabbed I mean, me. I, that I love... and the fight scene that they did in the river, where they're all in the barrels. Oh yeah, remember that scene? Yeah. God, that was incredible. That was good. But those were the yeah. only two things I remember. <laughs> people, people complain about. There's some uh, some guys in uh, New Zealand who's a mm -hmm. comedy. Uh, they're a comedy musical troupe. 
or troop. There's two of them, I think. But they even wrote a song like complaining about all the things that weren't canon in The Hobbit. Oh my god! <laughs> so uh, oh my, they should, and New Zealand, they should shut the hell up. That's paid for their government. Those movies. God, that probably, I, yeah. I guarantee shooting those movies in New Zealand brought in more money than, you know, the probably. sheep that probably. they shear. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, but that's another one. There's other things that people talk about. Uh, again, I'm just like, these are movies. These aren't the books. So you got to. Right. There's right. going to be some changes. Absolutely. Uh, the, other, the other complaints that people have had, and this is from people from a certain end of the political spectrum are Uh-oh. that they're unhappy about people of color being cast in this new series. And right. meaning that we have dwarves who are people of color. We have uh, elves who are people of color. Mm-hmm. And so certain individuals are, are upset saying, well, this, you know, it, it just, it, it, you know, makes you question the entire believability of the whole story, which I'm like, <laughs> I don't understand at all. First of all, question the unbelievability <laughs> of the whole story. It's a yeah, dragon in a, in a, a, a dungeon orcs. full of gold coins. Yeah. yeah, you have orcs and elves and uh, hobbits, but you put a black person in there. It's like, oh, no. Now forget it. No, oh, the whole no. story fell apart. whole story fell apart. Well, now, okay, so that's based on the movies, right? Because there were no black people in the people of color in the first three movies. Is that right? Right. right. And um, what people say is, well, you know, uh, Tolkien, his whole idea was he's right, writing this European, kind of this European history of the English people mm, or kind of the mm-hmm. world he was creating. And therefore, there wouldn't be people of color coming into it. And okay. to me, I'm like, again, it's like, what? It's no a black- TV <laughs> show. Yeah. And they're trying to sell it around the world. And not to yeah. mention, it's like, that doesn't sound like Middle Earth. That sounds like Middle America back in the 50s. You know what I mean? You don't want to <laughs> you, you have any people of color in there at all. You know, so it's yeah, like, exactly. it's a fantasy world. You know what I mean? It's right. a fantasy right. work. So we can uh, do whatever. To, yeah. It, let's just, yeah. yeah. I agree. And it kind of makes me upset because it makes me think that when we finally do start going to space, <laughs> And go at you know space travel or whatever. It's going to be as racist and screwed mm-hmm. up and economically mm-hmm. stratified, stratified as mm-hmm. anywhere else. Is what I think. You <sighs> know, where- yeah, we just can't seem to get past the, seeing our differences as yeah. primates. Why? And we should probably. That's another episode. Yeah, we'll do another episode on that one. Okay. But, but just getting down to uh, a few weeks ago, I read. So I was kind of aware of these other complaints out there. Those were like two right. of the main complaints. And the other one right. that came out with um, that, that I read about was people were complaining about the accents in yes. the new Lord of the Rings. And, yes. and this is kind of the most interesting to me because what, what someone realized was that the Lord of the Rings is using different existing um, accents, maybe even stereotypical accents to mm-hmm. represent the different groups in Middle Earth. And Ed Power of the Irish Times, for example, wrote on August 31st, 2022. And I'm not sure if you you know the, the series, but there's a, a group of people that are kind of like pre-Hobbits called the Harfoots. Right. Yes. And, yes. And he wrote, quote, the new series features features a race of simpleton proto hobbits, rosy of cheek, <laughs> slathered in muck, wearing twigs in their hair, and speaking in stage Irish accents that make the cast of Wild Mountain Time sound like Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> <I'm close. laughs> and, and God, case- <laughs> those Irish—they know how to write. I know. Just, I know. Why is that? God, the Irish. I don't know. I, if, and, and just so you know, I mean, it's pretty obvious that Wild Mountain Time must be must, must have some horrendous <laughs> accents in it. So I watch it, and just to, you know, I don't want to get into detail about Irish Mountain Time. It's there's a lot of problems with that movie. It's a little mm-hmm. romanticized kind of 
American version or vision of what Ireland is, rural Ireland is like or whatever. So there's a lot of problems. Okay. But I will just say this. Christopher Walken plays an Irish farmer. <laughs> I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. If you're talking yeah. about Irish accents. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that the New York, his New York Irish accent. It's, it's That's exactly fantastic. It's Christopher Walken. I mean, you just hear him as Christopher Walken. And, That's uh, fantastic. And, and just to give cut Christopher Walken a break, the other guy who got a lot, a lot of grief for his accent in that <laughs> is the one Irish guy in in the movie. He's actually from You're Belfast. Kidding. And they were complaining about his accent that he couldn't do. Uh, an accent from County Mayo in Southern Ireland. Oh my like they God. were even given wow. him. So the accents were all over the place. So that's what they're talking wow. about when it comes to wild wow. mountain time. To me, there's other problems wow. with that movie. But yeah. uh, and, and on September 28th, 2022, Andy Welch of The Guardian noted that the Harfoots <laughs> speak with Irish accents. <laughs> the dwarves <laughs> speak with Scottish accents. The elves speak with received pronunciation, which is kind of like the BBC accents. And the orcs all speak with Cockney accents. And the villi- the human villagers all speak with, with, with Lancashire accents, which is kind of a working class accent. Yep. And so I watch it, and sure enough, I mean, you know, the, the dwarves are supposed to be all kind of like, they want to get in fights and they love their mead and all this stuff. And they're all speaking with these like, you know, really heavy kind of like stereotypical Scottish accents. And then the Almost orcs cartoonish. are always. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so people were just complaining about, you know, like it's, there's been so much history of where the Irish, at least from like a, like a London perspective or like from an English British perspective were they were stereotyped as being backwards or simpleton. And this is kind of what certain colonial powers do is that you always, you know, even in this country, we, we did it with a lot of different groups that you try to stereotype those groups as they need civilization. They need to be brought up. Yeah. And, and so what well, like Southern <clears throat> accents in the United States, you know, it's exactly the same. Anytime thing. somebody makes, makes fun of somebody who's dumb, they talk in a, so I don't know, you know, right. that kind of a thing. And it's That's exactly the accent. same thing. Uh, but, but you can make if, if the orcs all spoke like, you know, like a Boston <laughs> accent, and the, the, you know, <laughs> the Harfoots all spoke with Southern accents. It might, you know, we as Americans might realize that like, wait a second, that's kind of offensive, you know, what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I guess, you know, they thought, well, this is American production. Co- I don't know. They were supposed to have like a linguist yeah. on staff talking about it or like helping them oh. with their accents. Oh, can you imagine that job? Oh, <laughs> oh, what do you do? I'm the linguist on uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh. oh. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get everybody, and, and yeah. like I say, even the in the show, the Irish accents are all over the place. Like I, I couldn't in Wild Mountain Time. I could tell like a few people where I was like, yeah, that's that's kind of a crazy accent. But as an American, I can't really tell the the difference. Right, <clears throat> different dialects. Right, and why that would be great people the wrong way. You know what I mean? Right, <clears throat> right. So, what? Why is this important? And we're going to get into talk now about a little bit about socio linguistics, which is kind of looking at how language is used to um, maintain power in mm-hmm. societies or cultures mm-hmm. or that's one yeah. of the, but we're more how not just maintain power but it's also how language people use language in their interactions with other people in the mm-hmm. society and to manipulate to to you know it, what's funny is that i was listening to a, a podcast about uh news uh news reports in the in the 40s and the way yeah. they talk, you know, it was yeah, just like yeah. so amazing. And 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 it's like, where did that come from? That dialect. Yeah. It's like yeah. this stage dialect that's kind of uh, adjusted to they wanted to sound unlike anybody you would hear on the street. Yeah. So that it yeah. sounded important and gave them uh, 
you know, power, as you said. And and I wonder if, uh, like, you look at old movies in like the early '30s, and there, there's crazy accents going on. And I don't know if crazy. people actually spoke that way or if it was, uh, you know, trying to be heard with the microphones or something. I don't know, but that's or that. Well, the snake eventually ate its own tail because people started talking like that because <laughs> they heard people talking like that. Yeah, and it's this feed, yeah. feedback loop. Um, yeah, which is really, really interesting. So, um, so what's important is there. We have a thing in social linguistics, or there's a, a theory in social linguistics of called linguistic profiling, and what that mm-hmm. means is that we're able, consciously or subconsciously, we're very good as humans at picking up where someone is is from by listening to how they talk, mm-hmm. and then what we do after that is we begin to make evaluative judgments on that person Mm. based on what we think people from that area actually are. So you gave a a really good uh, example earlier, which was the Southern dialect. Yeah. And so- Hello, everybody. (laughs) I mean, that's how how people in a stage show or like the Mm -hmm. stereotype is somebody from down South is probably slower. Maybe they're racist Mm -hmm. or maybe they're a Mm -hmm. little backwards. Uh, Uneducated. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Uneducated is a good way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. if you hear someone come in to talk to you with a Southern accent, you consciously, even you might not even be aware of it, but you've already identified where they're from. Yeah. And you're trying to, maybe make an assumption about who they are based on that accent. Yeah. I was just listening to a a podcast, another podcast. um, uh, And, and it was a historian and she had a Southern Mm. accent. Yeah. And um, it's also, by the way, I think we, we judge Southern accents differently if they're male or female. Because there's this whole stereotype of the Southern Belle or the you right, know the Southern right. hospitality when it's a fem a female voice, and when it's a male voice, it's more about you know racist or or uh, yeah. uh, redneck, uneducated like redneck. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but it's interesting hearing somebody with a PhD talking with a Southern accent. You know, right? Because right. I think your brain kind of discombobulates you just a little bit because you're used to judging it a certain way. Right. And I'm sure at being a PhD with a Southern accent Mm -hmm. that it's, it's probably kind of hard to go out and when you give your presentations or whatever to that, you will have people making those assumptions about you. Yes. Based on your accent. Yes. And the other thing that is kind of interesting is for any piece of fiction or science fiction fantasy for it to be relevant. uh, We need to have some context of what the story is, meaning that if if we had a story of just two like cognizant gases out in in space or something and their interaction, we we wouldn't be able to understand that story. So we need to have some sort of the the storyline of a fantasy piece or a science fiction piece needs to be rooted somewhat in reality. Yeah. It tethers us a little bit and gives us, you look at star Wars, you know, all the bad guys have an English accent and, right. uh, and all the good guys have an American accent for, Yeah, for the most part, you know, or, or even going in, okay, this is supposed to be way back in space. Where, where do they go? They go into the cantina where they're playing like, having drinks and playing, playing, playing saxophones. You know what I mean? It's like it gives yep. us a context Something. for what's exactly. for going on to the story. So Because if not, we'd be like, well, this doesn't mean anything to me. You know? Yeah, right, so, right. And then, so, by the way, the cantina motif should be eliminated from Star Wars movie. We've had enough. Have they, had I haven't enough. seen any of the new ones. Oh, really, they, so. are, they still nod to it. And it's like, please. Yeah. Ever since the one in um, Jabba the Hutt's cave where the guy was, uh, you know, the keyboard. Yeah. Oh, that Muppet thing singing. No. <laughs> no, we're done. We, we get it. But 
But that's kind of rooting. That's giving us something as an audience that we can. Oh, okay, I understand what's going on here. This is right. something, and that's to that's where my brain was with the whole Lord of the Rings thing. Is like, look, it, it, we need to group these these um, species. Uh, first of all, there's so many. You got the elves and the orcs and the oh my god, there's so many. Yeah. And, and these proto hobbits that you're talking about, you got some, they all need to talk the same way. But I guess the argument is, well, why couldn't they have a standard English accent? You know? Right. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because what, what research has found is that writers, playwrights, whoever, producers, in order, it's it's like a shortcut. You take the kind of stereotypical language that you mm -hmm. already know in this world, the real world, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. put it into the fantasy world so that people mm -hmm. kind of have an idea already. It just kind of saves you time mm -hmm. as a as a writer or as a as a production. And, that, and that, in other right. words, instead of having to like fill that all out with scenes, mm -hmm. I just give them Irish accents so people and know <laughs> yeah, that they're kind of simpletons or what you know what I mean? And but, but right. the thing is then it kind of turns on itself because then people start to hear that accent. And then when they meet people in the real world who have similar accents, mm -hmm. consciously or subconsciously, they begin to think, hey, well, maybe that person speaks like that Harfoot did. And maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe that person's a little sim a simpleton as well. Right. Right. So and 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 you look at like uh, for the southern uh, again the example of the southern accent, you look like uh, uh, what was the one where the sheriff and oh he's always he's driving his car really fast. It's Burt Reynolds. Oh, uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Smokey. And Smokey the Bandit. and the Bandit. Yeah, or Dukes of Hazard was another one with Dukes Enos of Hazard. Oh my, that thing was right. I mean, that's a whole <laughs> that <should> be burn. <laughs> really should. <laughs> so, uh, and finally, one other thing we could talk about is the cultivation theory. And the cultivation okay. theory came out in the 60s. And at the time, they were looking at uh, people, how people watch television and the effect of watching mm -hmm. a lot of television. And what they found was, well, people who watch a lot of television over a lot of time begin mm -hmm. to perceive the television's v version of reality reality as being more accurate than real ac real reality i guess i would say right and i think that <clears throat> has 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 uh, co been compounded in a major way by social media right you know you look at like the news reports um all of the arguments on twitter as if that's the conversation that all Americans are having when in yeah. fact it's these, you know, people who just love, you know, a, a small sliver really of people right. on both right. sides who love to argue. And yeah. most people don't, most people want to find some sort of, you know, understanding. Um, yeah. Yeah. And well, you know, it, it's, it's weird. People talk about a simulation. Like, are we in a simulation now, which is really fascinating um, but we, we are in a simulation of our own making and it's, it's our primate brains that have created art that now informs life yeah. rather yeah. than is a mirror to life. That's crazy, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so getting back to the topic at hand, I mean, yeah, it's, um, if you see those stereotypes that are constantly reinforced through characters in mm -hmm. a certain way, where people who speak with mm -hmm. a more uh, accepted uh, version of English are more mm -hmm. in the more powerful roles, mm -hmm. uh, then you consciously or subconsciously over time begin to see, well, people who don't have that accent are lesser than i guess i would yes. say yes i i mm. i fully admit that i <laughs> fall into that i when a when somebody with an uh, uh, uh um upper class english accent is talking 
yeah. you know, as long anything but brogue, really. I mean, as long as they're not Cockney uh, or, you know, a, a yeah. working class, I'm I'm intimidated. I immediately think they're smart. <laughs> Yeah. And uh and that they are more well read and more educated than me by the way they talk. And I'm yeah. I'm totally educated that way. And you know what? I'm finding if I can open my eyes to that, not so much. Not <laughs> so much. <laughs> I you know, I <laughs> if I can break that down, I find um the reverse is often true. Really? All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down on the Brits. I just the Brits that are in LA. I mean, there's a gaggle that I maybe it's just at my kids' school. Anyway. Re- re- remember when they uh there was a time with um infomercials where they, they would always have some Irish guy or not not Irish, but some like English guy would come over with some accent. And he would just yes. be selling some crazy product, but you know, it'd but be like we would I'm, listen because we yeah. love the sound of that right. English accent. So it's they were so kind of comforting, playing with that idea of Americans are going to think this guy is really smart, even though he's <laughs> he's selling them laundry bombs or something. You know what I mean? Some sort yeah. of chamois for your car. And, well, um, ShamWow, the ShamWow guy <laughs> is a his old. Do you know? Have you followed the ShamWow guy? No, no, I have. For, for our listeners, that's worth that's worth a Google. It's worth <laughs> a Google. <laughs> so we're being. <laughs> I don't mean it. <laughs> so, the thing about dialects is from from a linguistic standpoint. Uh, all linguists say all dialects are equally successful meaning they're all they all can communicate information which is basically what you want uh-huh. a language to do so this whole idea right. of whichever one is better or has mm-hmm. more prestige or more power is just something mm-hmm. that we kind of lay on it uh mm-hmm. from as a culture i mean it's it's just it's yeah. no inherent value one dialect more than another dialect for example Mm -hmm. standard american english is from a linguistic standpoint is no better or worse than uh southern english or african-american vernacular english or Mm -hmm. irish english Mm -hmm. um it's they're all equally successful at communicating information and so all this idea about better or worse uneducated is just kind of what we lay on uh, culturally that we add. We- do, yeah. I mean, do we create dialects um, subconsciously or, or, or in, a, in a way to sort of tribalize and, and know where we're from? I mean, is it, it, it must be useful in, in some social way in order to, Oh, okay. That guy's, that guy's from yeah, Kansas. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's uh, – I don't know if we consciously create a, a dialect. I think dialects are always changing. Uh, yeah. They're s- switching. I mean, you can't control a dialect. It just has a way of – like you were saying, the people back in the 30s or, or the 40s, the yeah. newscasters. Newscasters mm-hmm. don't speak that way anymore. So – Right. Um, so it's – we but can't really – mass con- media, now it's able to be con- you know homogenized, I think, a lot more efficiently. Like I, I would imagine, we're losing a lot of the character in dialects because, um, you know, that we just we only hear people talk a certain way, right? For the most right. part. Be- well, and there's actually been studies done where people have looked at the the major characters on primetime television, and like eighty nine percent of the major characters on primetime television television speak in standard American English. And hmm. so if you, again, you just kind of <laughs> listen to it next time you're watching TV and it's true. It's like, well, yeah, okay, standard American English. Yeah. And how much of the country is standard American English? I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a, an accent that's supposed to be that's been created. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Johnny Carson. Right. Uh, right. Y- I remember, you know, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be close to a Midwestern mm-hmm. or Midlands accent, but, but it's trying not to give away any region they were trying to make it more uh-huh. like newscaster 
kind of like the received pronunciation in England was kind of BBC. They called it BBC uh, English because they were trying to make it seem like there was no accent to it, kind of flatten everything out. And that's kind of like standard American mm. English too, just kind of flatten everything out. Flatten um, it all out. Have, have you heard in speaking in Dublin, there was supposed I don't know, maybe somebody can let us know if there still is. It was called the D4 accent. And it was an what? accent of from just a postal area of Dublin, Unbelievable. Which, uh, <laughs> which were kind of affluent young people lived. And uh-huh. they kind of created their own accent. There was nothing organic about it. And I guess it's another Irish accent. Oh, they that, did it on purpose. Well, it just kind of came up, but it was only from this area. Mm. And it was kind of meant to be, you had money, you were living mm. in Dublin, and mm-hmm. uh, and people don't really know where it came from, but they think it may have come from like sitcoms, like Friends. <laughs> so, wow! So if you their interpret interpretation of Friends, right? Well, you know there was the Valley Girl, right? Uh, remember exactly. the Valley Girl accent, uh, which which was a uh, uh, very small area, really, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and became you know, just this insular kind of thing and, and then ridiculed. Um, yeah. But, but all I, across I, yeah. the country, like even in Kansas city growing up, there were young women who would speak with a Valley girl accent, which is yes. again, yeah. just picking it up from, from the media, I guess. I, yeah. You know. They would just pick it up and uh, yeah. From uh, yeah. there Well, there was that song. Um, there was a Valley girl song yeah. that uh, Frank Zappa did it. it. And the, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was his daughter. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I wonder if that's the case for us. I mean, we both grew up in the same neighborhood in Kansas. Yeah. Basically. And I feel like we don't have a pronounced accent. In fact, and my kids don't <laughs> think so either. And they would tell me. But when I talk to people like my, my brother or I talk to people from home, I was just in Wichita not too long ago and uh, my cousins and I, I found myself sliding in to it. It felt yeah, like a yeah. comfortable blanket, you know, and, and my kids make fun of me after I get off the phone with relatives. I'll talk. I'll talk with more of a Kansas twang. I guess. Yeah, I, th- I think it's, you know, it's kind of you were talking about tribalism or whatever, but it's like a group identity with your accent and your accent can kind of. You, you know where someone's from. You kind of like, you know, yeah. people always talk about the Saudi or, you know, like, oh, you, you know, whatever it is. And I fall into it because I want them to know that I'm par- I'm one of them. Right. I right. think. I think that's what's going on. I want them to know that, yeah, I live in L.A. now, but I'm I'm still the same same guy. Because that's I mean, it's it becomes one of those. uh it's difficult because if you you could be ostracized if you, if you don't if you try to change your accent whatever accent or dialect you grew up with yeah if you try to change it the people that still had that accent may think that you're trying to get above your station or like oh you're turning your back on this or whatever but yeah. uh, you can also if it fails like if you start trying to talk in another accent. Mm-hmm. And people of that group realize, hey, wait a second, you're not real. You know, something slips, oh. and they realize, there was hey, a, you're not. There was really a guy part of our group. at right. There was a guy from at college who went off to England for the summer and came back with an English accent, <laughs> and it was clear to everyone that yeah. he had layered that on because he wanted. I don't know, the attention prestige. or he, he the, the prestige. prestige. Yeah. And it was, he was always, and I've thought about him ever since then. This is, you know, years and years ago, but I, I can't get him out. He pops into my mind all every now and then because he, he created a prison, you know, because yeah. once he came back and said, no, no, I, I didn't, this, I just started talking this way, you know, and people were like, come on. Yeah. You yeah. Were, you were gone for three months and, and then he had to keep playing it. So now he's caught in this lie 
And yeah. he can't get out of it without his pride won't let him admit, all right, yeah, I I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, you can't and just I throw heard, up at that part. Yeah, and I heard from somebody recently that, you know, he's now in his 50s like me, and, and a yeah. friend of mine ran into him. He's still in the, uh, wow, the you accent. Wow, can't let it go. You can't he let can't it let it go. <laughs> I wonder if you is got it, him drunk. If you got that's what they always say about that D four accent. Like you get him drunk, yeah. and then you, they go back to their old accent. You know. Well, that's the solution for everything when you're <laughs> Irish. <laughs> <laughs> there goes everything we just talked about. <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. That's the stereotype. <laughs> I was given an example of the stereotype. But that would um, be that is. But let me ask you. I'm going to throw out some. I'm just going to throw out some characters from film and television. Okay. All right. And you just give me like, is it, what's your opinion on these accents? Okay. okay. Jar Jar Binks. Oh, <laughs> oh, you started with the, 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 <laughs> the he, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. That to me is the end of everything I loved about star Wars. That was the cancerous tumor that was injected into star Wars. Um, yeah. Offensive, uh, over the top. Uh, yeah, it went too far. It went too far. Yeah. And, uh, and, and getting back to it, like the Gungans, <laughs> from mm-hmm. which Jar Jar Binks is a Gungan. Right. What did right. they fight with spears? They live in the forest, you know, they're kind yeah. of like, kind of again, simpletons or kind of like primitive. Speak with a Caribbean spit, accent. It, 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 yeah. yeah, and Jar Jar is a complete idiot. Yeah. And that poor actor, by the way, this is as an apropos of, of nothing that you're bringing up, but that actor had to wear a Jar Jar Binks <laughs> hat. Did you ever see the filming of it? No, no. The no. poor guy. <laughs> they made him wear a Jar Jar Binks on top of him. And then they, you know, just because so, Jar Jar was taller, so the actors yeah. could look up at the head on his head. Oh, and God. then they took took him out of every frame and replaced it with that. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, no. Well, I guess years I, and, later, and, uh, George yeah. Lucas tried to make it. I read an interview from like 2007, where he was like, "Well, you know, Jar Jar was actually based on Goofy from the Disney movies." <laughs> as if, no oh, if boy, you, if you, you'll see a lot of Goofy and and. You know, Jar Jar, and it's like, does that make it better? I mean, that makes it worse. Yeah, I think that makes it worse. He still yeah. doesn't get it. Yeah, God, it's so weird getting old and and getting out of touch, isn't it? <laughs> it's just yeah. a terrifying. Because I just think, like, what's my version of that? You know, what am I doing? Yeah. That's that's the Jar. What's the Jar Jar in my life that well, I'm I, making? That I'm putting well, I out mean, there. Yeah, as being like two white middle aged older guys uh, mm-hmm. with who speak, you know, relatively standard English. I'm sure we mm-hmm. have blind spots that we don't even. Yes, we're not even oh. aware of. Yeah, so. when we watched the Super Bowl together and the Chiefs were winning the Super Bowl, we were yeah. a couple of hillbillies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was right back. It all it dropped right away. <laughs> yeah, no pretense. <laughs> all right, here's another no. one. <laughs> Mickey Rooney and Breakfast at Tiffany's. Remember that? Oh, yes. There was an Asian. He was doing like an Asian accent in that Asian. It was so, it's so hard to put yourself in that culture, that time period. Yeah. Where that felt acceptable on any level. Right. Right. On any level. But, you know, it came also from music theater, you know, musical theater, which was what his whole thing, theater. Yeah. Yeah. And with theater, you have distance. And when you have distance, there there's more give, you know? Yeah. But yeah. when you're when you film it and you're right up on them, there's yeah. just no excuse. There's no hiding, nowhere to hide. Right. Yeah, and I, I always, I always, uh, I, I think that was a common stereotypical Im- impersonation that people would do in stage at that yep. time. And yeah, and the thing is, I don't know if like even with the Irish accents and Wild Mountain Time or Lord of the Ring, as an actor, you just want a job. You know what I mean? You yeah. just want to, you yep. just want to get paid. And if someone tells you to do an accent. 
You're going to mm-hmm. give them the closest thing you can. So I don't think there's any malice in the no. actor doing But that doesn't excuse it. You know, that right. it doesn't matter. Uh, and, and, and that's unfortunate for him and, and the fact that it will never go away and that that movie is such an iconic movie for so many reasons. Right. Um, (laughs) he can't escape it. He can't escape it. I mean, uh, Audrey Hepburn though, even in, um, what was it? My fair lady. Was it my fair lady where she's, yes. So she's doing like an accent there. So then you turn around and she's doing. This kind of Cockney yep. accent I'm, over I'm, the top. I'm not, yeah, <laughs> totally. Oh my god. Yeah, over the top with that one. But that's over story, the top. And that entire play is about we're going to teach her to speak and pull her up out of the gut- gutters because she needs to speak yes. properly, and that will like open doors for her. Um, and and the, and the entire movie is that that is what you need to do. Right. Exactly. That's exactly and, what you need to do. There's actually uh, there's a an anthropologist named Pierre Bourdieu who came up with an idea of um, I love it when you speak French. <laughs> I don't know if our listeners know, but but human number one speaks fluent French, and it's so I, great when it comes apparently out. Apparently, I speak French with what I've discovered in France was I speak French with a German accent. What? So, so, That's yeah. weird. Yeah. How did that weird. happen? I have no idea. So your German, way- you, maybe your French teacher, early French teacher, was German or learned just the it in way, Germany, or just the way I speak it. Uh, I mean, it's it comes out, but it's with a, a German accent, and then I speak Italian <laughs> with a French accent. So I don't oh, know what Jesus. the hell, what the hell is going on? Mm-hmm. So I know, um, I know. But I'm not trying. And you speak so Kansan. You speak Kansan with a Jar Jar Binks accent. <laughs> Yeah, well, were, how did that happen? If I were to go into my natural dialect right now, people only you would be able to understand it. <laughs> but but Pierre Bourdieu, Pierre Bourdieu uh, has a thing that he calls cultural capital, and that is you can you, things like language that mm-hmm. someone could use. Like if you learn how to speak in the most accepted way, you can use mm-hmm. that as capital to move up or to gain Absolutely. more power. Ma- gain Absolutely. Because it's just like clothing and cars and, and everything, but it's deeper. It's more personal. How right. we speak and how we look, that's that's first impressions. Yeah. Yeah. And it, like if Absolutely. you went in for it for an interview and you spoke in a, in a dialect, mm-hmm. who knows what that, you know, if the, you know, it's just so. I, you're at. Yeah, you're the, 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 they can they will judge you, and you right. It, right. It, it may be good, it may be bad, but it will there will be a judgment applied to it. Absolutely, I mean yeah. that's what Pygmalion is about. Right, it's right. about the the truth of the matter. The truth is, she did have more opportunities when she um, yeah. looked yeah. nicer and spoke better, and it's just it gets back to that kind of primate core. Where we, as we were talking about earlier, see differences. Like we see patterns. We're very good at seeing patterns and differences in patterns. And that has, that served us in many ways to find the path back to the food, I assume, or stuff like that. But man, it's our Achilles heel. Oh yeah. And, and really, I mean, they're all dialects. Even standard American English is a dialect that we just- said, well, yeah, this is going to be the one that we give more power to or more value to, even though it's completely yeah. arbitrary. And even yeah. they talk about like English itself, standard English in England was really just because the court was in, you know, the royal court was in London, all the trade was in London. Mm-hmm. And even more than that, the first printer opened up in like Windsor, I think it was, which was still in that area of London. So then that, because he was printing it in that dialect, that's mm-hmm. the reason why that dialect became uh, the standard dialect or the more prestigious oh. dialect, even though it's just arbitrary. It just happened. Yeah. If he had been yeah. in Scotland and printing, then the Scottish dialect could have mm-hmm. become the standard dialect, mm-hmm. for example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And Hollywood's in America. 
So yeah. the and uh, you know the the American English accent is spread wide across the uh, the world. Yeah. Um, How was it? Yeah. Let me ask you this, because you were a teacher for many yes, years. Yes, I was. Yes. And, and there's a lot of debate about trying to teach standard American English in with other culture, but like students who are from other cultures or students who speak another, mm-hmm. another dialect for something mm-hmm. and trying to balance between what's the standard English mm-hmm. and what's the, the dialect that's spoken at home or dialect that's spoken. Did you ever find any, when you were teaching, was it difficult to? Well, I taught inner city and as a, uh, and, 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 and highly diverse neighborhood. I mean, I was the only white guy in, uh, in a lot of the schools that I taught in. And, and that was my first experience to this, kind all of the dialects that existed in that <clears throat> yeah. uh, community and uh it it yeah it, it took me none of them wanted to speak like me yeah, they, yeah. there was no interest in that uh, right. speaking like a an, a white dude yeah. um but it was fascinating trying to uh, my brain learning you know those dialects and picking up you know right things right. here and there and and how to actually just communicate because it's like when people go to New York for the first time and you hear a New Yorker talk, it's like, wait, what did he say? Yeah. I mean, somebody yeah. with a thick New York Bronx accent or, um, yeah, it's you, you, it's interesting how your brain has to kind of s- sort it so you, yeah. can, you can communicate. Remember, And then you're when, off and running. <laughs> remember when uh, you and I tried to hitchhike out of London one time years ago? <laughs> Yes, I somebody do. Told, somebody told us it would be so easy to hitchhike out of London. No, Jesus. And, that was a remember, terrible. It was like three days and we, we made it like four miles. Or it, yeah. In the rain. Oh, we were miserable and broke. But Horrible. remember, we went, there was a point where we went into some small town off the yes. highway. Yeah. And we went in and people, I knew they were making fun of us. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, but I couldn't understand their accent. I mean, it was English, <laughs> right? We we but, were getting getting near Dover at that point, right? Yeah, Weren't we? Yeah, we were like yeah. closing in on Dover. I remember that too. It was like a mall, didn't we go in? Yeah, and like yeah, that's, yes. And we 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 deserved it. Oh, too, yeah. by the way, yeah. We both had long hair. We were we hadn't bathed. You had huge <laughs> lamb chops on the side of your face. You looked amazing. That was the best look you ever sported in my opinion. And we were carrying huge backpacks that weren't designed to be backpacks. Yeah. Yeah. They were, how would you describe that? They were like they, big they were like, duffel bags, but not like double, like gym bags. They were meant to be carried <laughs> from your car into the gym, not meant to be like, or like the coach, you know, when the coach pulls up, at the practice right. and he gets out and just throws it out of his trunk. And then everybody comes over right. and gets the catcher's mitt or something. Right. But, well, yes. We were carrying those around like they were actual <laughs> double legs. And so, they, they would, those handles would dig into oh, it. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. awful. But I, I remember... can't believe our friendship survived that. <laughs> that, was... that says a lot about us. That does. I think that does. Yeah. I think that that sealed the friendship. I think <laughs> it, <laughs> it, so it could have gone either way. So depressing. Yeah. Oh. But oh. but I do remember like being in that place, like them laughing at us mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and making... not knowing why. Yes. Yeah. Remember, we even talked about it. It was like we were walking on the moon. Yeah, we we were like we were in a whole nother world, and and th- there was a lot going on, and we were totally unaware. Right, and they were speaking English. Yeah, that was all English, and I had no mm-hmm. idea what you know. It's like I know, I know mm-hmm. you're making fun mm-hmm. of me, but I can't say <laughs> anything because I don't know what it I is. Nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So another interesting part about this, from an entertainment standpoint is one of the I don't want to say worse but but one company does a lot with accents and okay. that's Disney. Yes. <laughs> Disney. If you Woo. ever watch a uh there's been a lot of research done. There's a anthropologist called uh I think it's Rosina 
Lippy Green, who's done a lot of writing about <laughs> accents, standard accents in uh, in dialects in Disney mm-hmm. films. And if right. you ever watch a Disney film again, just watch that all the main characters right. all speak in standard American <laughs> English accents. And yep. usually the ones that are speaking African American vernacular English or some other foreign mm-hmm. uh, accent mm-hmm. are all kind of either animals or villains. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So- <laughs> oh, I you know, the one I'm thinking of right now is Dumbo. Yeah, uh, and the, the reason I oh my god, the crows, amazing, amazing yeah. that that. I mean, you just. It's just fascinating. There's something hopeful about it uh, for me in that while we have a long, long way to go, we have come at least that far. Yeah. Because that yeah. just seems like unbelievable to me. Have, um, have you seen the original? And, and normally you would think, well, maybe they don't know what they're doing. But have you ever seen the original Three Little Pigs? No. Uh, you could see it online or at least clips of it. They may be trying to hide it or something but the original mm-hmm. three little pigs when the wolf comes to one of their houses he's dressed up as a jewish peddler wow and is speaking with a yiddish accent and that came wow. out in what like 1930 in the 30s like early 30s yeah. or something yeah and and, and that later was the- during the uh america first the the fascism hmm. in america at yeah at the time. or just People didn't think anything that that was offensive at all mm-hmm, to, to mm-hmm. have him dress up like like a Jewish peddler and speak with a Yiddish accent. When it when they redid it in the fifties, they kind of edited that version out. Uh-huh. Uh, and to where he now is dressed like uh, he's it, it's it's weird. You have to see it, but he's suddenly not speaking with a Yiddish accent. He's not dressed like a Jewish peddler anymore in the fifties. And they but redubbed it. They redubbed it, yeah, to change it. So then when you see things like wow. the, the crows and everything, it's just kind of like, wow. well, yeah, that was just kind of what was accepted then. But I was just thinking about examples of the use of dialect to attack. Uh, like when we were at war with Japan and, and, yeah. and with Germany, oh, my God. Yeah, the characterizations yeah. of their dialect w- is a way to like, mm, yeah, d- belittle them to, and, and and to 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 use some of our anger towards them, right? Uh, right. As as a way to, oh my god, some of those are just horrid. Yeah. Which, yeah, but it just shows you how powerful that 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 language is that dialect mm-hmm. or that accent is mm-hmm. that you can it you can get to people like subconsciously by getting in there mm-hmm. you don't have to describe it you can just use that accent to to kind of and i i think when people hear a german accent and when americans hear a german accent i think it's high probability that there's some nazi reference from yeah. some movie that they've seen uh that's you know triggered i mean from hogan's heroes to yeah yeah uh indiana jones to you know they're all yeah. there yeah although what interestingly you- sometimes when the germans the nazis spoke english it was with an english accent <laughs> yeah yeah in, in american movies what, what do just you to think be about like what- well it's it's over there in europe yeah they're smarter. They're like, like an English <laughs> accent can also be like an evil genius or something, you know? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. What do you, Cold-hearted. What do you think about when in, in movies they have like the German, they're supposed to be at Germans at home in Germany, but they're speaking mm-hmm. English with a German accent. Like we, we can't get past it. We got to put like a <laughs> the German accent on it, even though they're supposed to be speaking the same language to each other. You know what I mean? That always drives me crazy. It's like, yeah, it, it it it's they're just concerned about communicating to to their audience to different. the lowest common denominator. Yeah, yeah, it's still different. Um, you're an actor. Have you mm. ever had to do, do an, an accent? accent? I fortunately am terrible <laughs> at accents. <laughs> So the only accent I've really done is kind of a, a hyperbolization of 
um, my Kansas accent. Really? So I just bring my Kansas accent up a little bit. That's like the only thing I've ever really done. Really? Did um... I mean I was in Billy Bud <laughs> in high school? As were you. You were in the same performance. Uh, you were the favorite of the of the oh, director, yeah. if yeah. I may say. You yeah. were. He he always <laughs> talked about you and how great you were. Um, and I played. Didn't I do like a was it? Uh, what was your character? You weren't Screech. What was it? Not yeah, Screech. Screech. No, not Screech. no, it wasn't Screech. No, no, it wasn't Screech, but it was something like that. I yeah. was a low and I was supposed to be, you know, and I used, I remember that I was directed to use that kind of an accent. Yeah. Kind of like, you know what? I saw a, uh, my mother had kept a photo from like opening night or something. And, uh, <laughs> All I re- when I saw the photos of it, I realized. Uh, re- remember, we were supposed to be on a ship in the 18th century, uh, yes, on a British naval ship, and mm-hmm. the the makeup. I remember all the young women who did the makeup were all mm-hmm. kind of like they were kind of like new wave girls, you know, or a new wave. You're right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Lit it. Mm-hmm. And and so it wasn't really. I was theater, looking at my, the theater department had attracted the new wave girls. Yeah, Did you ever notice that? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Uh, but I was looking at this photo that my mom had of me in costume at that opening night, and uh, it's it's like my my, my makeup. It's not really like <laughs> theatrical makeup. It's makeup of like you would put on if you were going out to a club or something. <laughs> So I look like you looked a little Bowie or what, what was it? Well, what? I mean, it's, it's like, it's not like giving me like a five o'clock shadow or something. It's, <laughs> it's like giving me like rouge and like eyeliner. And I look like Adam ant, you know, I was supposed to be wearing that like British uniform. And nobody like, knew what they were doing. Nobody knew. We didn't, you know, that's so funny though. <laughs> Well, the lead in that movie, who was uh, was also uh, he he looked he looked a lot like Adam Ant. Remember, you're have you ever when you've gone in any situation have you ever had a negative reaction to our Kansas accents? Hmm, I don't know. I've had people notice it. Yeah, but I don't know if I've had any ramifications of it. People find it humorous when it comes out. Yeah, you know, oh my god. Yeah, but no, yeah. I don't know if I've had anything negative because of it that I can think of. I I think about again, kind of coming back to the group identity, and there was a time, and mind you, I never thought I grew up with an accent or anything, but. I remember going to our high school, 10 year high school reunion, and I saw someone who I'd been to grade school with mm. and had known me since I was very young. Mm-hmm. And I remember him looking at me and saying, you know, little McCray, because that's what they all call me, and little McCray, mm-hmm. look at you talking all sophisticated and shit. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I remember just like then of like, okay, this is, this isn't a good thing. You know what I mean? Like we were right. talking about how yeah. if you try to change, people mm-hmm. take take it a certain way. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I remember thinking, okay, that's weird. And uh, and then there was a time when I was working for the Italian government in Chicago, and one of part of my job was to be answering the phone. This was pre internet. Mm-hmm. was to be answering the phone and answering questions about travel in Italy, like helping people find mm-hmm. hotels or whatever. Right. I um, love that job. I, I did love that job. Ruined me for life. The Italian, the Italian, the Italian <laughs> approach to work completely ruined me. <laughs> uh, or I should say the Italian approach not to work completely ruined me. Um, but I had been on the phone with a woman, an American woman, for about 40 minutes, okay, because this went on. I was helping her with all this stuff. And as I got ready to hang up, uh, she said to me, I have to tell you one thing. And I go, yeah? And she goes, your English is almost perfect. <laughs> 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 
she thought I was Italian speaking very good English. But, but I mean, uh, at that point, I couldn't pull myself to tell her, well, it should be I'm, I'm American, you know. Uh, so I had to I had to play it off. I couldn't admit it. I was so embarrassed. So it was like, again, that kind of like falling when you mm-hmm. fail. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. fail mm-hmm. trying to change your accent uh, to fit another group, another prestige group or something. It had yep. failed. And she had told me it was almost perfect. You know, and for years I've been wondering, like, you know, who knows what, what things I was getting wrong. Um, do you ever, do you ever, like you, you talk about certain things that come out after you've been talking to your, your family back in Kansas. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, what are some of the, do you have any of the, can you remember any of the things that come out? Oh God. Refrigerator, cement. Insurance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the things my kids bring up too when it, when it comes out, you know? Yeah. 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 I'm the same way. Um, I try to be good about keeping it standard American English as much as I can. But every once in a while, I'll have just like a zinger come out, which is um, <laughs> pronouncing S's like D's. Like when you say instead of isn't it, it, isn't it, isn't it, 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 yes, 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 I do that. Or wasn't it, you'll say I wasn't going to go or something. So, so it's a pronouncing S like a D, which is isn't it or wasn't it, wasn't it, yeah. 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 And the other thing I've, which my wife has caught recently that I've started saying is they call it the positive anymore. So you say, anymore, I like eating spaghetti at night or something. Whatever you say, you're saying, anymore, anymore, I I don't really enjoy, or anymore, I like having coffee after dinner. So you're using the the term anymore. I don't know that one. That one I don't, I haven't used, but I'm familiar with it. But yeah, that one doesn't come out for me. It's it's really... uh, I found it. I had to look it up again, and it's a it's a thing in certain parts of the country that mm. they'll pronounce anymore or use the positive anymore, which is just amazing. Odd. And like I say, amazing. I never consciously did that, but it must I must have picked it up from my dialect as a as a child. I don't know, growing up in, in Kansas. Amazing. Um, so, just to be wrapping up at this point. Uh, yeah, I think this was an interesting discussion. I don't know if there's an answer to anything or if there's a right or wrong, but just being aware of where the accents are. Yeah, and 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 celebrating the difference, but knowing that that has nothing to do with what's behind you. It's a tough. Right. It's hard. Yeah, audio audio is important, man. Yeah, you can have a bad video. You can have a a bad video with good audio, and you're okay. But you have great video with bad audio. Forget about it. Yeah, what yeah. we hear is everything. That's interesting. But we're probably picking up more than we even know, mm-hmm. like from significance or like evaluative. Again, coming back to that of like we're making evaluations based on the 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 audio that we're picking up just when we're out in public we're picking it up but also yeah. just be aware of it when when you see it i mean it's a game make it a game even become aware of it of like seeing it in film and tv mm-hmm. of like what mm-hmm. type of the main characters what type of accents are they using and then the, the, the minor characters what what accents are they using mm-hmm. and and just know like what what is that making you think just be aware of it i guess is more than anything um and again i as a as a language person i love all kinds of different languages and and dialects and it, it when we try to say one is uneducated or one is better than the other or whatever it is it's just arbitrarily stuck on there and yeah what what's the the primary prestigious accent now maybe you know give us another 20 years 30 years may not be the prestigious accent anymore so It'll sound like those actors in the 30s <laughs> yeah exactly so I think we may have to come back to this topic. Yeah, I, this I, is a big one. Yeah, I love it, though. I love this topic. Me too. So, 
Me too. This was this has been great, and uh, yeah. This All right. Is, uh, I, we'll, we'll be back. This is human number two. And this is human number one. And thank you for tuning in to uh, an intro to Anthro with two humans. And we will uh, see you later along the journey. So. Yep. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Bye.